Hi, I'm Holly Chance. I'm Executive Director of Sustainability and Commissioning at KO International Consultants. I'm based in Abu Dhabi and I've lived here for nine years. It's a great place. Walk us through about KO and the sustainability approach of KO International. Sure, sure, with pleasure. Okay, so uh, KO International is a large architecture, engineering, project management company. We provide comprehensive services for the built environment. So we have quantity surveying, we have master planning, we have landscape architecture, but we definitely have sustainability and commissioning. So our approach across the company is really integrated. So anytime you have a KO project, there's always sustainability involved in it. And depending on if the project goes from design through construction, there's also commissioning. We're really, really big on commissioning because commissioning is the key to successful building operations. Um, we're also really, really keen on having a very strong and modern approach on control. So some of the work that I'm doing here at WFES is looking for all the new things that are happening in controls. Um, we are also very committed to using renewable energy in all our green building applications, and we do some uh, utility-scale renewable energy jobs as well. Um, what makes it very unique here in the Middle East and probably in the greater part of, of the MENA region? Well, um, I feel KO is unique because it's still privately owned and I think it will be for the foreseeable future. So we're a really large company. There's 2,500 of us. Um, we're international. But we have this really special culture that increases our ability to explore innovation. We commit a lot of time and money to research and development. We have very creative people in all our divisions. And I think that that is an environment that develops because we are privately held. And I'm really proud to be part of such an organization. In terms of the sustainability and renewable, Sure. That you're offering to all of these buildings. Sure. Well, if we start at a utility scale um, at KO, because we have really great master planners, we're able to participate, um, for example, on a utility scale master planning project. There's many going on in Saudi Arabia right now, for example. And master planning for uh, a utility scale renewable project is a, a specialist um, activity. It's not like master planning a, a community. Um, there's certain demands for operators of renewable energy facilities that we're very familiar with. We've done this work in the Gulf already. Um, we work with specialist vendors of different renewable energy applications. Um, and that's one unique service. Now, going down to a, a more micro scale at a building level, um, because every project we do has a green building rating, some of them have two, even three. We have a project right now, for example, that has a LEED Platinum rating, a WELL Silver rating, and also has to do El Safat. This is in Dubai, so that's a, a multiple tier of green building rating. And all of those really encourage us to use renewable energy. So we might be using solar thermal, we might use integrated PV, uh, solar PV panels. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to use renewables. Of course, in the public realm, we're going to be using renewable energy there instead of traditional public realm lighting. Um, it's really exciting how you can use uh, renewables now in a very creative and attractive way. I mean, the days that renewable energy meant um, that you lost aesthetic value are so behind us. And, you know, the new definition of beauty is really high performance in my book. How do we fuse this sustainability and AI? I'm, I'm so glad that you asked me that. But first, yeah. I, I have to say that I was really, really delighted today when Dr. Sultan Al-Jabbar presented mm. AI as one of the key themes in the opening yeah. of Mazar's yeah. event today. I mean, World Future Energy Summit, putting AI out there is is so timely. It's, it's really, really perfect because I actually think that AI properly harnessed, um, when we use it as AI for good, um, AI for sustainable development goals is really going to be the key to rapidly accelerating gains for it. So, for example, um, 
um, at my level at KEO where I'm working and, and why I'm here today in particular is I'm really interested in the role that AI will play as it diffuses into controls for energy efficiency. So for by using something as simple as Bluetooth devices, sensors, but then feeding data back into an AI application, the AI begins to learn the behavior of humans. So for example, AI knows that a conference room is only used maybe an hour a day. It can know that on Tuesday it's used two hours, on Wednesday one hour, and by using that data and that learning about behavior, it can help control the BMS in a way that is much, much more precise than a normal program. Now, some of the things that I'm talking about are still at an R&D level right now, but I'm so excited that at KO we're engaging with the companies that are doing the R&D, we're engaging with universities who are doing this kind of work, and we're really seeking to know exactly how to diffuse this type of technology and AI applications into a level that is right for our clients at KO. Are we going on to that direction where we will see Arnold Schwarzenegger and <laughs> doing the Terminator thing? Uh, well, I, I don't think so, although I do um, really agree with many, many global thought leaders' concern about the lack of governance of AI. Yeah. So I yeah. don't, I think Elon Musk, when he says he's scared, it's actually that he's concerned about the lack of governance. And this is, is true. We need a much more um, global debate about the governance of AI. And I think that this is going to be as much discussed as climate change is yeah. in the coming years because it impacts um, defense, it impacts employment, um, it impacts so many layers of well-being of humanity and the planet. Um, so I don't personally think that we're going to see, you know, uh, Terminator, <laughs> Terminator type stuff. But I do kind of get a kick out of the jokes that people at KAO occasionally make to me about when I start talking about AI and controls and how much better your HVAC system is going to work. But, you know, I think it's, it's really a good thing that um, everyone takes some time to study it. Just the way we yeah, all have yeah, to study yeah, climate yeah, change yeah. and sustainability from, you know, every CEO needs to have a, an energy management plan. Yeah. Every CEO needs to have an AI component. It can be part of their energy management plan or maybe something their IT department introduces to them because that's usually the people yeah. that are the most well-versed. I mean, I got interested in it because I was surrounded by technical people who were talking about it so much that I just had to explore, you know? And once you start looking at it, it's so fascinating. And I'm not a, a, an AI expert expert by any stretch of imagination, but I am going to be an expert in how to advise my clients to embrace it and how we're going to future-proof their buildings through very modern thinking, engineering, and sustainability strategies so that when this stuff really kicks in, that they don't have systems that are obsolete. We want systems designed and engineered that are thinking for the future that AI is coming in and that those systems that we're using in some way can be modified for better efforts that can be achieved through the use of AI. For the last question probably is, what do we expect for KO this year? Um, I think we're going to see greater specialization uh, from my team in particular about building operations right. um, because a lot of the really great wins have, have to happen in existing buildings. Um, we're also very, very deeply invested into new applications of using building physics and then um, connecting the arc of those models into putting data back into them to get a very, very tightly, tightly monitored model that looks at how the energy is being used in operations and compares to what the performance was meant to be from the model. So it's like a calibrated model. Um, that's something that I'm, I think that we're going to be very well known for. It's called City Information Modeling at KEO, and we're really excited about that.